Baker, nice to have you, Mr. Baker. Um, why'd you do this? Well, you know, it's been something we've been thinking about for a long time. As you may know, I uh, started StubHub back in the day when I was in business school at Stanford. Um, and then Viagogo really was to, to bring the vision internationally. And so the opportunity to combine the two um, and have true global coverage uh, just made too much sense. So we're very excited about it. Uh, you're paying, at least according to um, eBay's interim CEO I spoke to uh, earlier, 25 times current EBITDA. That's a fairly hefty multiple. Why is it worth it? Well, I think we really think about what we can deliver, the value of it. Um, when you look at StubHub, I would tell you that StubHub is one of the premier uh, consumer brands on the Internet. It's a phenomenal platform. It's been serving uh, fans well now for 20 years, just about. And when you look at what the combined entities can do and provide, uh, we think it's very exciting. What does it let you do that you weren't able to do previously? Well, really, it's all about we wanted to make sure our vision is that uh, fans should be able to buy any ticket for any event anywhere in the world in their language, their currency. Uh, and we should give sellers of tickets and, and content owners access to consumers globally so that uh, they can reach them. Uh, Viagogo really has uh, been uh, great distribution outside the United States. StubHub's got great distribution inside the United States. So you put them together, you can fulfill the global vision. Eric, what does this mean in terms of, I guess, the role, the increasing role that technology and data are going to play and how consumers can access tickets and also, I guess, what that means for pricing? Yeah, so I think, I think techno two, two things there. I think the technology, as things get smoother, you're going to continue to eliminate friction and make it easier. So I remember before even starting StubHub, the difficulty in getting access to a ticket, and you actually had people on street corners. And I think now it's just going to get easier and easier for people to choose what they want, to see what they want, when they want to see it. Um, I think that in terms of pricing, anytime you got more competition in a marketplace where you're bringing more uh, sellers onto one platform and competing with one another, um, I think you're going to see more accessibility at better prices for fans. Uh, StubHub does about $1.1 in revenues. Give our uh, viewers and listeners uh, a sense as to the overall size of the company in terms of its revenue base. Yeah, so, you know, StubHub, I think, uh, basically sells about uh, $5 billion of gross merchandise sales of tickets. Uh, Viagogo sells billions of uh, dollars worth of tickets globally. So, you know, you're putting the two together and you got a pretty, pretty sizable business. Uh, you didn't give us any specifics there, though, did you? I can't. I'm sure I'm sure you can do the math. But if you take uh, multiple billions with uh, with five, you, you get a sense of it. <laughs> multiple billions could be a lot of different things. This is a significant talking about billions. Four billion dollars is a pretty significant number. Are right, you've got committed debt financing, I guess, from J.P. Morgan. Are you confident uh, in terms of where you're paying for this and how you're paying for it? Yeah, we've, we're very we're very excited about it. As I say, this is an acquisition where the industrial logic makes a ton of sense for us. It's going to bring a lot of value to fans. And again, this is we know the sector extremely well. Um, having started both companies, we understand um, what what we're getting here and what we can provide for other people. So uh, it certainly uh, it's certainly finally, something. I guess Eric, you yeah. uh, Mr. Baker, you founded as you said you founded StubHub, but then you were in business school. And you that's when it was sold to eBay for 310 million bucks. So you weren't there. I just wondered whether you would have, if you had been, ever sold it in the first place. Well, that's a good question. So I can tell you this. I started in business school with one partner and we built it up. I had some differences with my partner and remained a shareholder, but unfortunately wasn't able to uh, to dictate the sale of it. So if, if it was up to me, I, I, I wouldn't have to buy it back because I never would have sold it. But everything works out in the end.